Hi gang! Oh, this is a Van de Graaff generator experiment video prompted by a comment. It's also something that's bugged me for a little while. It has to do with the Faraday cage and the top dome of a Van de Graaff generator. It builds on the Van de Graaff generator that I showed how to make in my first How to Make a Van de Graaff Generator video. Perhaps the most important thing that makes a Van de Graaff generator work is the use of the Faraday cage or Faraday ice pail effect. That says that if the dome of a Van de Graaff generator is charged, then the positive or negative charge exists only on the outside of the dome. The inside remains neutral. And since the inside is neutral, that means that you can keep depositing charge to the inside as long as you want to, without any repulsion pushing back on it. Any connection to the inside always sees a neutral surface. Now you'll notice that in my Van de Graaff generator I didn't stick the top section inside the dome or can like you usually see done. Instead I just took the wire from the brush at that end and connected it inside the can. The charge that gets picked up by that brush goes along the wire and happily goes into the inside of the can where the surface is neutral. But user Felix Graphics said that by doing it this way it's not using the Faraday effect very much because the collecting organ or brush is not inside the can and that it would be much more efficient with it in the can. So since I'm an experimental scientist at heart, I thought I'd do an experiment to see if it made much difference. First, I'll need to modify my can so that I can put the top part with the brush inside the can. To make electrical contact with the inside of the can, I've got a long piece of wire here. This is 18 gauge stranded. You want fairly thick wire, so 18 gauge is good. And uh, it's stranded, that way it's flexible. And the whole idea is um, that when I put it in the can, it's way too long. And it kind of clumps up inside there and makes lots of contact with the inside edges. Um, so what I need to do next is actually strip the wire here so there's no insulation on it so that it will make contact when it's inside. Next to attach the wire to this. Now I've already put one rubber band around here. So what I'll do is I'll stick the wire up through there. Okay now I further want to secure this again so I'm going to take this wire and just kind of put it up like that. Take another rubber band. There we go. So the whole idea there is that no matter what I do to this piece of wire here, it won't upset this wire here. That way I won't have to constantly be readjusting it. So again, you want that wire, top brush, to be very close to that rubber band but not touching. And you want to spread out the strands of the wire as well so that there's a lot of nice individual sharp points there. Okay, so I've taped the can to a uh, plastic container here. I'll take the wire and stick it inside. Push it inside the other one. Let it turn it on. Oh! Ouch! Works great. Okay, so remember the experiment was whether the uh, brush has to be inside the can or whether just the end of the wire has to be inside the can. Now I found a problem here. The inside of the can actually has a thin insulating coating on it. So if the wire is in like this, it has plenty of contact with the inside and will make better contact than if the wire is out like this. There's less of the wire touching the inside of the can. So what I've done is I've attached a nut and bolt right here and bolted the end of the wire to that. That way I'm sure the wire is always in touch with the metal of the can. Another thing I've done is to attach a fixed spark gap here. So no matter what I do, the distance here will be maintained. As well, just putting my hand here interferes with the Van de Graaff generator, uh, the dome. So what I've done is put a little handle here so I can move it back and forth like that. I don't want to move this back and forth because that it tends to interfere with the motor. So on with the experiment. So as you can see, there was a 20 to 24% decrease when the brush was outside the can, which is a lot. So I'd have to agree, the brush inside the can does make a difference. However, I also tried with the connection entirely outside the can. Of the experiment's not done without connecting the wire to the outside of the dome or can, which is not the Faraday cage effect for sure. We're getting just the occasional spark there.
Here's a summary of results. As you can see, there's an even bigger decrease when the Faraday cage effect doesn't play a part at all. So with only the wire in the can and not the brush, the Faraday cage effect still plays a large part when you compare what happens with the wire connected outside the can. Though I was surprised at how many arcs having the wire outside the can produced. My guess is that the loss of efficiency is due to the can being charged with the same polarity as the charge on the wire. That causes repulsion to happen here as the charges try to make their way in. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes the first how to make a Van de Graaff generator video, and also one that goes into great detail on how a Van de Graaff generator works. And for variety, check out my video on how to make a speaker using a homemade piezoelectric crystal. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!